Happy Vlogmas Day 10. Today is Mr. Stitches and my 36th wedding anniversary. That's a long time. We met in 1985 and we were dating for a couple of years and when it came time to wanting to get hitched, we decided we were going to plan in secret and that we would book a Weddings in Paradise package to St. Lucia in the Caribbean. So that's what we did. That's why our wedding anniversary is in December, because the weather's pretty nice in the Caribbean in December. So we booked three weeks away, and the law was that when you arrived in, in the island that you had to be there for at least a week before they could arrange for the wedding. So we arrived, and then we had a meeting with the registrar, and after we'd been there a week, we had our ceremony. So we didn't dress up in typical wedding gear. Some people did. There were at least three couples who got married in the same hotel that week. And one girl had the full white wedding dress with her. Not us. I had a sort of silvery gray skirt and a white blouse on. And Mr. Stitches had matching pants and white shirt and a pale pink tie. That was our wedding outfit. Those were our wedding outfits. And the hotel made sure that there was a really nice backdrop for the ceremony. They had these leaves, massive leaves, palm leaves, I guess, that were plaited and flowers tucked in so that when you sat on the two chairs, there was a lovely tropical looking backdrop. And there was cake and there was sparkling wine, probably not champagne, but, you know, sparkling wine. And, um, and it was lovely. So the day after that, we were witnesses for two other people who got married. And so on our wedding, they were our witnesses. And then a couple of days later, another couple got married. It was quite popular back in the day. And of course, we got home and the family didn't know. And my, my dad said, thanks very much. You saved me the cost of a wedding. My dad, he was ever practical. So that happened in 1987. Hard to believe. So what have I been doing today? Not much, actually. That's not quite true. I mean, I've been home all day, but I haven't been just sitting on my butt the whole time, except for the little bit where I got stuck into Instagram and <laughs> scrolled and scrolled. I got a bunch of laundry put away. I cleaned up the kitchen. That took a while. And made a meal plan right up until Christmas Day. So a two-week meal plan, because that had to include a potluck like that we're going to our winter solstice dinner and our Christmas dinner, which is on Christmas Eve. On Christmas Day, we keep it really simple. And if I do plan anything, it's usually just brunch. So that keeps it nice and easy. So that was done. So I crossed out of my to-do list and I watered my plants because they had been a bit neglected while I was away. But then they don't need watering much in this time of the year anyway, so it was fine. Made sure the Christmas tree had water in its little trough, pot, base, base. It's in a nice cast iron base. I made sure it had water. So after I had done the essential house type stuff, I sat down and finally got around to making a pig and a carrot. Now, if you're wondering why I needed to make a pig and a carrot, well, VegFest is happening again next September and I'm on the committee. And not only did I volunteer to be the person in charge of the silent auction, 
I also thought it would be fun to have crochet pigs and carrots for sale because that's part of the logo that we have on the poster. Oh, I may regret this. <laughs> so I said I would make up a little sample of a pig and a carrot. Well, I didn't have black yarn for the eyes and I didn't have green yarn, green yarn for the carrot leaves. So the pig is cute and it has rather weird purple eyes. But what's nice about this little pig is that there's no sewing on the parts. So as you're, you're working from the nose back to the tail, the ears and the legs are just made with popcorn stitches. So it's just incorporated in, in the round. And I think that worked out really well. And so the carrot, which of course the pig will in theory be riding on, was a separate pattern. I found both of these through Ravelry. They're both three patterns and I'll link them in the description box. The carrot I made smaller than the original pattern because I didn't need it to be really, really long. And the pattern just had a little green circle at the top of the carrot, but I wanted something that looked like leaves. So again, I would make this in green if I make it again, but I just made something that looked like leaves. So the logo looks like a pig riding on a carrot that looks like a kind of a rocket ship. And so that's what I made. So I'll take that to the committee meeting on the weekend and we'll see what they think. My friend and I also said that we'd be willing to sew a bunch of tote bags for this. Now there's two ways this can go. Either we will buy the fabric and the two of us will sew up, say, 100 tote bags, which we will get printed somehow with um, the logo. Or the other option, the easier option, would be to buy a ton from Amazon. And it actually does work out a bit cheaper to get them from Amazon. Not a lot cheaper, but less money than if you're buying the fabric and obviously a lot less work. So I'll be taking that to the meeting as well. But what I thought I would do today is I would sew up a sample of the tote bags. Um, I'm going to use a tutorial from Christine's Home Affairs. She sews to sell a lot. I think I've mentioned her before a couple of times. And she has a store in Australia and she sews to sell a lot of her things in the store. And so she's got some really good tips for sewing things in bulk, batch sewing. And so I'm going to follow her instructions to make a tote bag. I'm not sure if I've got the right weight of canvas that I wanted to use, so I'll have to have a little rummage through the stash and see what I have. Really, it was more just to see what the size was like. So that's the plan, but first, I need to clear the decks in here. As I'm looking around my sewing room, I am seeing mess, mess, and more mess. There's um, yarn and fabric and tools everywhere. So tidying up in here is the first job. Well, fortuitously, I had exactly the right kind of light canvas in the stash. I needed a piece that was 18 by 36 inches, which obviously I cut right on the folded fabric, didn't even need to open it out. So that means you could get two of these bags from one yard, obviously I think in meters, but a yard is enough for two bags, um, although you would need a bit more if you're making the handles. And I did make the handles. You need 18 by 36 for one bag and then 44 by four for the handles. So by the time you've boxed the bottom, it, they come out about 13 and a half tall. And she doesn't trim her corners on the inside. So it's an unlined bag. 
and she just leaves the corners uncut in there, which is fine. Probably makes them a bit stronger. I did double stitch those bits for the instead of the surging slash overlocking that she does, I just use zigzag on my machine to neaten off this top part. And for the side seams, I used a stitch that well, you won't be able to see it probably because it's the same color as the fabric, but it makes like a strong straight stitch and a zigzag all at once. So it's almost like overlocking. And I think it'll be strong. So I just made this as a sample to take on the weekend so that they can see, the committee can see what we're looking at for a tote bag. And the idea would be to either heat transfer or screen print the logo on the front of the bag and then sell them. We were hoping to get a donation of fabric from the local fabric store, but they said they weren't able to do that. Admittedly, it was a lot. We were asking for 50 meters, which would have made 100 bags. I think it would have made 100 bags, allowing for straps as well, but it's a lot. So they did tell us how much of a discount they would give us if we did order it. Um, so I'm not sure whether they'll decide to go that route or if we'll just buy a bunch of them from Amazon. So the reason I wanted to make this one was not only to give it a go, because obviously if I'm making 100 with my friend, I need to know what it entails. But also I want to compare the size of this, the height, width and depth with the ones that I've seen on Amazon. So I think what I might do with this one, once I've shown them this, I think I'm going to dip dye it. I did that with my apron that I use all the time now. I made it out of an unbleached canvas. Back in the summer, uh, if you look at one of my blogs, I'm not sure which one it is, but I sewed an apron and then I dip dyed it blue with a writ dye and then I added a seahorse pattern, patterned quilt block on the front. So this one I think will be really fun, dip dyed. I have uh, some blue dye left and I also have some orange from way back. Maybe I'll use them both. Orange and blue, very cool together. But for now, I have to leave it the way it is because the idea is to have natural cotton bags and then put the logo on the front. I'm pleased with that. It won't hurt to uh, test it out as well and see how strong my stitching is. Maybe I should deliberately take it shopping and load it with stuff to see if it holds up. The bags I made years ago from upholstery fabric for my grocery shopping have held up really well. I think I made a dozen of them and I've only ever had to fix one because the side seam blew out and that was probably hmm let me see probably about 15 years ago so um, they've really lasted well okay it's late as in late afternoon dark outside Probably time I went upstairs to the kitchen and figured out what to feed us for tonight. Not going to be anything fancy. When I made the meal plan earlier, I had it start tomorrow. Because <laughs> I wanted to keep today simple. Because I knew I had other things I wanted to get done. And how have I been spending the last hour, you may ask? Well, I had this... what do you call it, like a storage pod thing. One of the ones that hangs up in the sewing room on a pegboard. Got a couple of needles on there. At least one of those is a special Sashiko one, I think. So last Christmas I had friends over and we did a little craft and I just stuffed all the threads back in the bag afterwards. So, yeah, it's been a year. Disgusting, isn't it? <laughs> so I just spent an hour detangling and sorting. So these are my Sashiko threads. Some of them haven't even been opened yet. 
These are all my embroidery flosses. They are not good brands. This is the one I just bought from the yarn shop in Victoria. So it's the only DMC, I think. The rest are generic brands or dollar store. But there's a lot there. I could certainly get a lot of cross-stitching time out of that stuff. And then these ones, which I just bought recently for a, from another dollar store, I thought, oh, variegated ones. And I couldn't resist them. Well, the thing of these is I'm not going to be able to split them and say in the same way. Because, of course, your classic DMC is six strands, and you can cross-stitch with one, two, or three strands, for example. Uh, depending on the size of the holes in your Ada cloth. This stuff, it's twisted. It's got a definite twist to it. If I can. I don't know if you can see that. There we are. So it's more like two strands that are twisted together. So it's not anything like this stuff at all. Still pretty though. Whole rainbow of different colours. So I'll be able to do some embroidery with it, but maybe not cross stitch. And this is the messy pile I'm left with that I'm tossing away. Lots of small pieces, tangled knots, and bits of wrapping packaging. That's all going in the trash. I thought I'd put a fireplace video on the TV because we don't have real fires in the fireplace behind the TV anymore. Kind of cool, actually. Well, it is cool because it's not hot. <laughs> it does look nice. Turned all the lights off just to see how atmospheric it was. There's the tree. There's my candles. I don't light candles very often. When I do, they have to be unscented soy candles. That one in the middle is not unscented, so it won't be burning for long because it irritates my nose. have my little Weasley sweaters interspersed among the candles and my cup of hot chocolate, my Santa hat, my crochet project in the snowman bag. There's quite a bit of clutter around here. That's going to be dealt with tomorrow when I do the housework. Once I get the vacuum out, things get tidied up as I work my way through the house. So that wraps up Vlogmas Day 10. Thanks for being here with me. Thanks for making it to the end. I always forget to say this, but if you want to find me on Instagram, Instagram, I'm now Stitches and Slapdashery. I figured out a way to change my name on there. And my blog is nickelinits.com, although it has been sorely neglected for the majority of the time because I've been busy with the vlog. So I'm probably posting there once a month now. And it's all stuff you will probably already have seen on the vlog. And I'm Nickel and Nits on Ravelry too, if you want to go and see my projects that I'm making and find out any more about them. So if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, stay cool. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, stay warm. Find something to enjoy on the long, dark winter nights. Embrace it. Two more weeks 
and the longest night will have passed and the days will start lengthening again. Have a good night.